this thing on. The red dot. The red. All right. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Today. Hello, Gus. I'm not very good at this. Yeah. My arms. See my arms? See Becca's arms? I don't know where she is. There she is. It's a short sleeve. I'm getting in trouble. There you go. It's, <laughs> it's a short sleeve shirt kind of day. It's gorgeous. It's been raining a lot since we've been here. It's gorgeous out today. We've had some gorgeous days. I have not seen a mosquito this morning. So, first time I've worn a short sleeve shirt since we've been here. Today we're talking toys. They're not really toys though, but the top three things that we wanted as soon as we got here, we finally have them. The Ranger, Polaris Ranger behind us, the solar system, and snow machine. Levi is going to tell us all about all the toys. Because I know nothing. I don't really, I know that it was all expensive. That's all I really know. I'm the cameraman. Action. Just got our doors. Hatcher Pass, Polaris, and Wasilla. a lot up here a lot of mosquitoes it gives us a way to be enclosed out of the elements it's really not going to get driven that much in the winter time because the snow is too deep but it'll help us with saving money on gas getting around on trails moose hunting fishing gold panning and we can drive it all the way to town if need be save us on gas and instead of bumping down the road in a diesel pickup truck, you can just cover ground in this. We did want to get a six-wheeled Ranger. Um, they do a lot better in the swamps and muddy, marshy stuff, but this is what was in our price range, so it's what we got. Voila. So the windows kind of crack open? Yeah. They both open either way. Get some ventilation. They close good, seal up good. It also came, so it's got weather stripping. Came with a cab seal kit that kind of fills in all the little air gaps in the cab. So it makes it a pretty quiet, comfortable ride. All right, well, don't get scared. <laughs> so, I'm gonna dump bed. You're all good. <laughs> or firewood, hauling gravel. Uh, just be handy for chores. Whatever we need to do. Uh, primarily, though, got it for transportation. Going, hunting, fishing, getting around. In Colorado, I've got a Tacoma that we use for all those things, but it couldn't make a trip, didn't have anybody to drive it, didn't have any room to tow it, so and this is what we got for now. A little shredding rig. It's got pretty good mud tires on it. Um, 
Not a lot of mud in Colorado. So I've been a little nervous of the mud just because I don't want to sink to the depths of the earth in the mud. In here. So it's got snorkels to keep water from getting in the air intake and into the clutch housing. When we got it, it had different snorkels on it that from here up it was different. They went through the back and we were unable to put this window in with those. So we turned the snorkels, which put them just taking air from inside the cab, made it really loud and really hot because the center one is an exhaust for the clutch housing. So it got really hot in here. So I just got some regular black ABS pipe. Used the hole saw, drilled the holes through the plexiglass window, sealed it all up. Now it breathes outside, much quieter. Oh gosh, you're learning already. What's that? So, a couple things on the inside. I like that it's kind of a three-seater. I don't know that we'll be able to fit a car seat in here, because I don't have a car seat yet, but worst case, there's space for a toddler. By the time we'll be using this, the baby will be five months old because I'm due in December. So maybe by May, snow will be melted and this will be busted back out. So I'm not too worried about it, but there is plenty of space for at least one kid. <laughs> Probably two, depending how close together you had them. Up here, there is, if you want to zoom in and look, there's a gun rack that actually, it looks kind of sketchy, but it holds them in pretty well. We've been done some serious bouncing and... Nothing's falling on our heads, so that's kind of nice. On the windshield, you've got a little windshield wiper for Levi. Isn't he special? Doesn't doesn't work for my side. I drive it, but let's be real. This is Levi's <laughs> vehicle. Uh, Four-wheel drive, all that jazz. It's got phone chargers because it's a 2017. We've never owned anything this new. We're not used to something that's like a four-wheeler <laughs> having phone chargers, so that's interesting. But overall, it's really comfortable. Even without the doors, we spent a bunch of time in it on the gold trip in the rain and everything. And like with a blanket, it was a pretty comfortable ride. So pretty nice. I It's Becca approved. <laughs> but like Levi said, we've never owned anything this new. But we upped our game. And we've got some pretty sweet snow machines to show you. Suits do pop off, we have one of these tabs on both sides. Don't laugh at our tarp, shed, enclosed trailer, something. So, hard to see in this wannabe tarp system. Um, we and my dad got 2024 Skidoo Scandic with a four stroke motor and a 20 inch wide track. Um, pretty fancy decked out machine. Pretty high tech for us only Colorado especially where we were in Colorado there wasn't a lot of snow to make it worth having a snow machine snowmobile whatever you want to call it so we have ridden a few they were like early 90s Becca's ridden some 70s <laughs> sleds growing up we've ridden some old stuff so this is pretty high-tech redneck but for us it's kind of more of a utility sled um, hoping probably not this winter with the baby on the way but hoping in the future to do some trapping and we live past winter road maintenance so this is going to be our only transportation in the winter 
and I'm not, I, rumor has it, Alaskan winter, it's pretty long, so it's, we thought it would be worth it. We did some shopping around the used market, being that it's July right now, really no way to test out a sled. I don't have a lot of experience, don't know what to look for. We just decided to go new, because as soon as it starts snowing, we're going to need them. We've got to get out to have a baby in December, so we needed reliability. Just kind of the nature of the beast. When it's the middle of winter, you don't want to be breaking down. So, 20-inch wide track helps. I can't remember the specifics, but these Scandix can actually pull quite a bit of weight. It's got heated grips, uh, heated throttle, all kinds of bells and whistles. It's got high, low, reverse. Um, we did get the four-stroke model. Should get really good gas mileage. That's what they say. It's kind of got a two-person passenger seat. For so, carrying babies in December. <laughs> yep. Pretty excited about that. Just kind of bummed that after spending an ungodly amount of money on them, we still have to wait a couple months for it to snow. So <laughs> we threw up this tarp thing on the trailer for now until we finish our projects in the basement and then we're going to park them in the basement. Solar is something that we've had on the camper for since what September, October when we got the camper. Um, it's worked really well for us on the camper but I didn't necessarily have a wealth of knowledge on solar I already one of the campers I had looked at before we purchased this one had a sweet solar setup um, didn't end up buying that one but then once we did get one I just copied that setup and it's worked flawlessly so I kind of wanted to stick with that knowledge that I had we went to the solar store up here and they kind of steered us in a totally different direction. Took their word for it. Kind of had some struggles initially getting it set up. Uh, seems to be working okay now. We are getting a little bit more sun lately, which is helping. But we've got two 300 watt panels. Uh, ran the wire underground to the cabin. And then we can go inside and show you what we got going on in there for batteries and an inverter charger. All right, so we got a midnight solar uh, 3000 watt inverter charger. Uh, it's a 24 volt system. We've got two lithium 24 volt batteries and wired in parallel to give us more storage capacity. Um, I am not an electrician as much as I've been having to play electrician with this cabin. But batteries come in, you've got a breaker here for the battery input. Solar comes in here, you've got another breaker. Uh, got a breaker on the output to the house. This panel is set up to have a generator bypass. Um, if you had like an auto start generator, then you could have it kick over into generator bypass. Something like that. Uh, sounds fancy, I don't know. Come to find out our biggest struggle, there's a Bluetooth app where you can connect to these batteries and it'll tell you the state of charge. Come to find out that's very inaccurate. We thought we were only getting up to 65, 70% charge, even plugged into the generator. I come to find out that's just an inaccurate. On our camper, we have a battery monitor with a shunt that reads the amps in and out of the battery bank. So it's very accurate. It's almost like a gas gauge. You know exactly what electricity is coming out of the batteries and then it measures exactly what's going back in in amp hours. So you know, you know how much you've drawn them down and exactly how much you put back in on solar. There are some different parameters you can look at on here uh, so like right now the solar is putting 20.7 amps into the batteries which is about as good as it's done 
since we've got it. So it's got a lot of other stuff on temperatures, shows the output. Um, but it doesn't keep track of amp hours, which is at least the way I learned with our camper, the best way in my opinion to monitor the batteries is through amp hours or watt hours. They're kind of the same thing. We've got it running into the main breaker panel. Um, it's been power and everything. We got the lights on. My parents did get a refrigerator. Uh, we have Starlink hooked up. Um, that's basically all we use for electricity. In the winter time, it'll be a lot using the light. It's still yet to see it dark in Alaska and all the times I've been here, so. Until winter. <laughs> really, no need for the lights yet. Yeah. The wiring in this cabin has been a disaster. Very just home done job. So we've been slowly. Didn't you guys have to do the ground? Or yeah. you're doing the ground? Yeah, it's not done yet. Because it wasn't grounded? Yep. It's been a lot of work. It's an adventure, <laughs> especially when I don't. I don't know anything about electronics, but I can look at it and tell you that it's, it's wrong. Not right. <laughs> Oh. Would you like to show me the basement? Yeah, sure. All right, so for anybody that's new to the channel, uh, these are not our cabins. We are staying with my parents. These are their cabins. They have a guest cabin um, that we'll be in in the wintertime. Uh, for now, we are still living in our camper. But these are some things that we've been working on uh, since we got here, helping them while we shop for land. When they bought these cabins, this basement or whatever underneath the cabins was completely full of more or less junk. There was a bunch of old cabinets, ton of spare little pieces of lumber and totes and just stuff that the old owners left. So I'm working on clearing all that out. That's why there's stuff laying in the yard. Uh, my dad's been working on building these shelves. We're getting lights in here, which brightens it up a lot, painting everything white, trying to make it so you can see. And that'll give us a place in the winter time if we do need to work on anything, fix anything, uh, we can get out of the weather. It's not heated down here. It's not insulated, but at least there won't be snow blowing around. And I think for now, this area, we're gonna pour a concrete slab, put a freezer on, give us a solid place to put the propane. Um, getting everything leveled out down here so that you can walk. It's just natural terrain under here. There's still stumps and trees. They just cut them down, built a cabin on top of them. Primarily dad's project. <laughs> getting it leveled and then thinking at least for now we can just drive snowmobiles in here snow machines snow machines snow machines there's no machines here there's snowmobiles in Colorado. they're not gonna let us stay if we keep calling i them know snowmobiles. i call them sleds i'm worse there's no that's better snowmobile Is it? Oh. it just makes me think breckenridge and then... oh goodness <laughs> would you want to show your welder it's a cute little guy end up getting on Small stick welder, uh, waiting on a 220 plug so that we can run it on 220 on the generator. Um, just a little Miller stick welder. We did have some stuff I was going to buy for the Ranger to protect the rocker area, rocker guards, some sliders. Uh, those were going to be three or $400 just to buy them. I know I can build them myself. Just decided to spend a little bit extra money, get a welder. It'll be handy for all kinds of stuff up here. We'll call it there for today. Just wanted to show kind of what our priorities were for getting to the cabins. We've got the top three, like I said, ready to go. Snow machine, ranger, solar, the really important stuff. Up next will be a water system. The guest cabin is being worked on. We'll do a video on that once we get it totally ready for us and the baby. And all the other projects will never be ending. I'm still learning to can, like in the last video, and working on the little garden, 
lots of things going on all the time here. We're definitely not bored for being unemployed, <laughs> ready to go. So that makes us feel a lot better. And make sure to hit us up in the comments if you have questions, comments, concerns, any tips for anything. We're not new to snow machines, but we're new to that new of a snow machine. So any tips, we would love them. Thanks so much for watching as always. Make sure to hit subscribe. The channel's been growing quite a bit. The Alaska drive up has been a pretty popular one. So if you haven't checked that out, apparently people like it. And we just appreciate every single viewer. Thank you guys so much.